Hey, Julian Kras here, and I will show you how to compare preamplifier noise with my revised method and how to interpret the measurements. You will need the following things. An XLR test plug with 150 ohms. To create this test plug, you simply buy a regular male XLR plug and then solder a 150 ohms metal film resistor across pin two and three. Please do this at your own risk Connecting the wrong pins might harm your audio device. By the way, the 150 ohms is to mimic a dynamic microphone and this is going to be important later on when we interpret our measurements. Next thing you need is a device which can produce a consistent sound. A sound system with a speaker works best, but your smartphone can work too. You also need a microphone, preferably a dynamic one, a mic cable and a mic stand. To compare the noise, you also need a software which can digitally amplify audio and can give you RMS readings of your audio file. In my case, I'm using Adobe Audition because it has the very useful amplitude statistics tool. And of course, you need the devices you want to compare. In my case, I'm comparing the noise of a sound device's Mix Pre 3 to a Zoom H5. First step is to position the mic in front of the speaker, get the microphone pretty close without hitting the membrane and make sure that after you place the mic, it will not move relatively to the speaker. Take your first audio recording device, which you want to test the noise of, and connect it to the microphone. Turn on the audio device and turn up the gain all the way. Now play a 1K sine wave with your speaker. For this, I used a website to generate sine waves, and I also link this in the description below. Now turn the volume of your sound system up or down, until the audio meters on your sound recorder hit roughly around minus 12 dB. It's not important to get this exactly right, this is just a starting point. Let the sine wave play and disconnect the first audio device from the microphone and hook up the one you want to compare it to. Turn on the second device and again turn up the gain all the way. Check if the signal coming from the microphone is clipping. If so, lower the volume of your sound system a bit so that the signal does not clip. Otherwise, you're good to commence with the measurements. With your second device still connected to the mic, record five seconds of the sine wave. This will be our reference level. After that, disconnect the mic and plug in the 150 ohms XLR plug. Record five more seconds with the device. This will be our noise recording, which we are going to compare later on. Now just repeat this with the first audio device. So again, connect it to the microphone and record 5 seconds of the sine wave, which should still be playing at the same level. Disconnect the mic and connect the XLR test plug. Again, record 5 seconds and after that you can turn off the sine wave. In the end, you should have 4 sound files. One file with the sine wave recording and one with the recorded noise. And you got these two files for each device. Okay, our testing is done, now you can analyze the files. Load the four files into the program and scan the sine wave reference files to get their average RMS value. In my case, the RMS value of the reference recording of the Zoom H5 is at minus 14.92 decibels. And the RMS value of the reference recording of the MixPre 3 is at minus 13.19 dB. Now take the RMS value of the device with the lower value and calculate by how much you have to amplify it to get it to match to the higher level device. As you can see, the reference recording of the H5 got a lower level than the Mix Pre 3. And the difference comes out to be about 1.7 decibels. Now take the calculated difference and use this to amplify the reference and the noise recording of the lower level device. So now I'm amplifying both H5 recordings by 1.7 dB. To verify that the two tested audio devices are now correctly level matched, I quickly scan the H5 reference recording again, and as you can see, the RMS value is now nearly identical to the MixPre 3's reference recording. Okay, let me explain why we did all this. With both audio devices, we recorded the identical sine wave. And because we know that this sine wave had the same amplitude for both recordings, we could use it as a reference level. This gave us the amplification in decibels needed 
to match the overall system amplification of both devices. The same amplification was then applied to the noise recording of the lower level device in order to make a direct comparison of the noise possible. One more thing I would suggest before finally comparing the noise is to add a weighting filter on top of both noise recordings. For this I modeled an A weighting curve in the FFT effect in Audition, which I will apply to both noise recordings. And that's it, just analyze the two noise recordings with the amplitude statistics tool and compare their RMS values. In my case, the noise recording of the MixPre 3 comes out at minus 74.77 dB RMS and the noise recording of the Zoom H5 got an average RMS of minus 65.54 dB. From these values you can already see that the noise of the MixPre 3 is quite a bit lower than the noise of the Zoom H5. When you subtract the two numbers from another you get the exact noise difference in decibels. In this case it's a difference of 9.23 dB between the two devices. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you can expect about a 9 decibels difference in noise between the two devices when, and this is the important part, when using dynamic microphones. Because we tested the noise performance of both devices with our 150 ohms XLR test plug, the noise measurements include the noise of the preamp and the noise of the 150 ohms resistor. So the calculated difference in noise is the difference you can expect in the real world with dynamic microphones connected to the tested devices. Now I can already hear you ask, but what about condenser microphones? How do we compare preamp noise when condenser mics are used? The answer is, you don't. You simply don't have to. Condenser mics typically have a high sensitivity and the noise law of the mic is usually quite a bit higher than the noise of any preamp. So when using a condenser mic, preamp noise is not really important because you're limited by the noise of your microphone anyways. And this brings me back why we tested with the 150 ohms in the first place. We wanted to see how two preamps compare when used with a dynamic mic, because in this situation preamp noise performance does matter. By the way, this also explained why shorting the preamp, like I stated in my old video, will not accurately represent the noise difference in a real world scenario. So use this 150 ohm testing method instead. And the last thing I shortly want to talk about is how to not compare preamp noise. Some people don't connect anything to the recording device at all and just record the noise with the gain up all the way. Well, I can certainly understand why people may be tempted to do so. Because they didn't connect anything to the preamp, they think that only preamp noise is recorded. This is somewhat true, but the problem is that the preamp noise changes quite dramatically depending on the source impedance. And not connecting anything to the preamp is equal to connecting a very high impedance. This will result in an artificially raised noise floor. In a real recording scenario, this would never happen because microphones are low impedance sources. So connecting nothing to your audio device and recording the noise is not a good idea. It won't show the noise of the preamp under normal working conditions. This method is not useful to compare preamp noise. Don't do it. Okay, that's all for now. Subscribe for more videos on the technical details of audio recording and I will see you in the next one.